There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the rules. There are no rules! That is... The labor is everything! Let's do this! Now... Did it... Oh my god, it really made you start. Oh, fuck! Okay. Uh, okay, let's just, like, blast through this. Oh, it's you again! Hello! Uh, fuck. Uh... You know, I've been thinking about your secret recipe. Of course you were. Oh, wait, didn't I say this? That's exactly right. I remember it was because I've tasted it before. I stopped at a random fried chicken stand the other day, and the chicken tasted exactly mm. like yours. Did you just compare my recipe to a random fried chicken stand? Well, yes I did, but it was really good stand, especially considering it was frozen first. <gasps> frozen chicken! Oh, God. Colonel Sanders struggles to conceal his emotion, fighting back tears of anger. I can't believe you say such a thing. Oh, God. How could you? Oh, God! Oh, no! Oh, oh shit! Hey Panda, you saw that this game was called the Dating Sim, right? If that's the idea of dating, this is something the game for you. Fuck. <laughs> oh god, I died! <laughs> okay, clicking right answers. Yeah, it's Dating Sim, I forgot. <laughs> Newt, okay. Run to him. You decide the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel are would be to run to him. Surely he'll sweep you up onto the back of a stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll sure be good. Oh, come on, come on. Suddenly, your son of a surprise horse and a rev jump kicks you in the directly in the face! The force of will completely knocks you out cold. So the darkness, you see a vision. Oh, Panda, you here to deliver. Not this guy. And it is important you remember this exactly as I say. If you forget the world could end, this is us who's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. If you could save me, all you need to do is repeat my name three times. My name is... Before you can continue, you're suddenly awakened. Ah, jeez. Attending you. He roused you back to life for the Satchel Secret Spices, or is that just his natural season musk? Um, lean in for a kiss. Oh my god, no. Come on, his craftsmanship on his horseshoes. Maybe he shouldn't be riding a horse to school, or maybe he shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who was in the wrong here. But one thing is for Colonel Sh Sanders is pretty dreamy. And of course, has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they are when they were pressed against my face. <laughs> That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals uh, again. With oh. oh, God. That's dog water. Spicy ghost pepper. Dog biscuit. Because of its shape, it's baked, and you assume the dog biscuit is a treat made of spice sprinkles. An example of his own culinary talents. Perhaps you reach out for it and win. Oh. Sprinkles jumps up and bites onto your cooking apron. What kind of monster would steal a dog's favorite biscuit? Rear print and left in tatters. The entire craft looks on in horror as you fall unconscious from the embarrassment. Oh god, no! I've never even gotten to taste it. Is this the end? Oh, you fade into darkness, but there's something there. Oh, the spork monster. Brooke, what are you doing here? This isn't your time, my friend. Your act of kindness has not been prevented. Oh, okay, I guess it's gonna didn't kill him. You watch as your apron magically repairs itself. You won't have to live in embarrassment anymore. Thank you, my friend, wherever you are. Oh, what the fuck, okay. Oh my god, I guess that was like a, like a, like a retry, <laughs> not killing him. You grab a glass of water, <laughs> you grab the glass of water and gulp it down. It's cool and crisp, and like the purest snow melted from 
Lee and Mountain Spring. Hey, that was mine. It was my favorite for my favorite toilet. You owe me six dollars. And you've got excellent taste. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. Okay, shut up. Okay. Click click. <clears throat> Let's see. If there are any right answers when it starts just getting great danger. Celsius, yes, right. Oh yay. Oh eleven, yay. Oh yeah, I had no idea. Uh gratitude, oh yeah, that's right. Uh small town, yep, right, right, right. Ooh, we need to shut off the noise of rain and protein and cooking. Uh, silence, yeah, that was right too. Yep, yep, yep. Believe in you, yeah, cheering me on, wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, now you can like Colonel Sanders and everything's fucking over the horizon. Nope. Uh, nope, that was right. You're standing in the desert island and oh, what a hug. Yeah, I know, right? Ha ha ha. Uh, yep. Woof, woof, woof. You're struggling to keep up. <gasps> Playing toss the biscuit. Oh, yep, no, you have to break your hand no matter what. I don't know. Hmm. <gasps> Honeycomb with chocolate, oh yes. Huh, reach out with your apron to wipe the sauce off his glistening face. Colonel Sanders recoils and brushes you back. This goatee is in the fashion statement. It's functional. I'll save the flavor for later. Oh no, really? Ah! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's been so long! Oh my god. Oh shit. <laughs> advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Springles is already in the room waiting for students to arrive. His clear, he clears his voice to make an announcement. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on. And I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. Oh god. Dogs can be rather predictable, especially sprinkles. See what happens. Sprinkles stops in his tracks. He focuses on the window. The room is deadly silent. Then he follows his gaze and see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence! I told you to never come back here, Terrence! I will destroy you, Terrence! Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drooling, flying off his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. He wonders, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again! After Sprinkles is satisfied with his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in the hearing distance, he returns to the professional home. Oh. Professional. Professor? Oral? Professor. Ahem. <clears throat> Apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Panda, for reminding me to dole out the indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the classroom. Sprinkles is interrupted by the world and spirits coming to the back of the classroom. I told you to save it for after class. <laughs> you think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to, strapped to a stranger? Mary and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. But no, you had to show off to your cool friends, Jeff and Joan. They ain't Jay forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzzz. Yeah, well, that doesn't make a great date. Bzzz. Then take Jeff and Joanne with you. You can get hold. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff. For all I care. Sadly. 
Hoodwink begins to st shudder, steam pouring out of the gases, gaps in his panel, and then a loud ding stops him in his track. But, aww, he broke. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that. Oh my god. Thing burped up a completely deep fried seasoning, considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep fried. deep friended footwear. deep friend footwear. I guess it looks okay. I think Sully rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend that they do not just see the entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pow over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showed on a challenge exam. I am still working on the title, but I think you get it. The test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there is a very beautiful soul in your right. I need a pep talk. Hey, Mary, uh, are you okay? Okay? I'm so mad I can smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke. Even if the source of her frustration is a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carport lane to success city. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs as she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to settle up with Colonel Sino Stallion right off into the sunset without me? Of course not. Well, maybe, sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a big ranch. And a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring home. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else to meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone who throws a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that fresher dog is gonna love it. While you were prepped on the mirror, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay because you had a better idea of how to spend time before your exam. You decided to head to the arena early to practice the dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van the supposed man man and his evil or counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through the quickest test of a recipe you've been working on, Panda's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish come second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Oh, look at all those fucking cherry blossom petals. Panda, what are you doing here? There's still time for the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in, I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you sh let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but... That decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off right behind you. Ignore it. Like there was no saying at all. That's the way you practice this. Okay. 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 You got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards away. It's oddly specific distance, but you expect nothing less from such a oddly specific man. You knew it was pot pie just from the smell. Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Haha, <laughs> no. I can smell that it was made with heaping helping of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth! Wow! <gasps> this is the best pot pie I've ever tasted! I've always loved country cooking and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final shutdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the rules. 
There are no rules that is except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass with several sets of tweezers. She's definitely praying to go big, going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect, his original recipe fried chicken. <laughs> the intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash! Miriam fiercely just injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, better bester! Ben Ben flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roll! Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula! Shallow personality spatula, I guess. Even Clank gets into it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clint learn to speak English? <gasps> it's the singularity we were foretold. We mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. Self distract. Ben Ben quickly unpunched Clint and rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spellbook out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, or even if it's almost certainly evil magic? Oh god, I don't want to <laughs> do it again. Oh god. Uh, who needs magic when you've got passion? I want to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. Ah, uh, I believe you can do Miriam knows this too. I've always believed in you, Panda, since we were little kids because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly uh -huh. into your boiling noodles. It's a secret ingredient. The one pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. Then watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling into a dark cloud that thickens and congests oh, before your eyes. It is Steve, the spork monster. Steve, what happened to Boyorko? You're not here to battle me, are you? Where spork monsters are many, I think Boyorko had the day off. But you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Oh, hey, we're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang around? Uh, I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve notices that you got a warmer stash me through a cooking station. I see that you're what you're up to. Crisscross the magic time is excellent. It's on me, huh? Uh, yeah, you guessed it, sort of. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in the pot of salt water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a wee little squawk pup back in the old country. You feel the sport monster rolling up to tell a very long tale and, and involving tell. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school when I had fallen asleep during the gear tactics class and then I woke up He tossed a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll talk to you later. Good luck. After suffering this huge setback, ooh, music. you don't know how you could ever win. You summon extra power to from within yourself. You give up and drop out of school. You can do this. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary engine flows through your body. My heart is pure, my hand is steady, my taste buds have been pairing their entire lives for it. Yes, Panda, you are the chosen one. You will love energy. Alright, 
hours you've been summoning anything really better. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds are have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground and you're coursing through your body. You know that with this power you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and cannot be served. Oh fuck. But don't worry, dear panda. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sandy decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I am truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet, rolling with the punches. He sets up to your station and stands right beside you. I am here to help. All you've managed is to make a mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to remove the most deliciously fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can be su have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. You're, are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food you need? Time's up, students! What? With time expired, it is the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Spock, clank. From off screen, you hear a pure, innocent gurgle that can be come out that can only come from one student. <laughs> I'm playing. It sounds like it's coming from the room closet over there. Ma'am, would you mind? Inside the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broomstick hook for the elasticity of his your pants. Pop get down from the right now. Let me guess. Did Van Man have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who can am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing only he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. Can I be excused? Sure. You kids in your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks, pranks, clank! Where is the pressure cooker roll off to? You hear a signature whirl beeping. And then there's none. Somehow, he got, must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out a little later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three to four days long. But after these days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles in a savory soup. My word, so delicate. It is, is that a Teeny tiny Narukomiki I spy a float in this itsy bitsy pool bowl. Yes, Chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles. And some greens he made from baby le tea leaves I picked myself. Sprinkle carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime. Did anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who don't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine. I'll enjoy it all myself. And that flash the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than the thimble with the soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with so much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Panda, for helping me believe myself. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I make uni over smooth egg custard in an ox hand urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin onto the spines of a second different colored type of urchin? Yes, sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? 
That's exactly what I think. A bit much is kind of my brand, isn't it? Sprinkle Selene's in to sniff the ocean, but he can't get his nose around on account of all the spines. He begins to paw at it, erratically causing the custard slush to spill everywhere. Woof, woof. Please be gentle, my pussy. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he cannot get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Ow! Oh, to my tongue. The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. Can't eat this. The cup will my tongue. The qualified. A sudden turn of events. Who would have thought that serving a food in a bowl made of needles could have such could be so difficult to eat? Dejected Van Van does not go gentle to the night. Disqualified for glamour. No, the coward. Blamefully. This isn't the last time you've heard of me. Before forcing us to enjoy his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles gratefully laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yes, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps my calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to set up. Now describe your dish. I made orange gossam, Turkish delights, and a light rose water syrup topped with French margarine, margarine and connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fraudulent. It is meant to be a display piece. You don't eat the food. It's a cooking school. Not toasted your ears or something, Panda? I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having to, an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I would have gone to the school of eating, school for the hungry. I suppose you could smell it if you're absolutely insistent, but don't breathe too hard. It might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley as she finally cannot keep her toothpaste from teeth. You wouldn't know high in cuisine if it ate cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Ricardo Sanders are just the final cook. Step up together. Two chefs. What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. I'm somewhere in the room, in place. Just when I thought I'd seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this. This. Thing. And it completely blow my mind away. In my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so deliciously, perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, you pass, and you get a pass. Everything gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win! Finally! Together, you and Colonel Sanders make a new menu item. Their new menu item is so impressive that even Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnificent fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles their chaos that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as a site of the school's graduation dance. Just do it, cafeteria. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, 
The humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. D -d DJ Dog in the house! Ow, ow, ow. You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world renowned turntablist? Who says you couldn't teach an old dog new tricks? Ban Ban and actually tell everyone that they committed themselves to working, righting the wrongs that they did while they were villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not after haunting. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed it at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together, it's the Spork Monster. He totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here on out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Potter Monster. Students try to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork, sorry, Party Monster. Dejected student walks off. Bye-bye. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found a love in her cooking, and you know she's gonna do great. The red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom like it's a Hollywood movie career. Who could command such an interest? Oh, I wonder. It's Pop! He arrives late to the dance, but apparently for a good reason. Look at this little crowd. Walk in the carpet, you see perch atop his dirty chef hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, I get it now. And we get a new queen to the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the Chancellor of Sussex Church. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparkling electric history. It's Plank who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I've graduated, I can reveal my truth. Well, he's doing the talking thing. I am Plank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from far away planet in another dimension. Why? Why? I actually feel like I knew that this whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you please come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I can't just begin to learn who I am, really. And is this isn't the right time for me to develop my life or who's figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Marion's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand kind of humans are weird. Portal opens and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. How did fascinates? Oh my god, he's not in his... Just like that, the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it is not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end. No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Panda, why are you sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, why you tell me? What are the qualifications that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Oh my god, his face. Off the top of my head, oh I don't know. A spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. Oh my god. As you glide across the dance floor hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the feature stretches out in front of you. And once my 100th franchise is open and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Panda. Oh my god. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think that's, this is something I need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time here at school, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be? He found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef. 
can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love, the love of entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll in the PhD school. Oh my dear Pat, I'm sure that you will find your place eventually. And along the way, you will have me by your side. The end! I guess I won, kinda, right? Maybe? After two hours and 18 minutes and 53 seconds of gameplay. Huh. Alright, bye!